please welcome Solomon Gezahe from NC State University. Uh, he'll be discussing, can plant productivity and resource distribution of silk pastures be regulated by manipulating tree arrangement without changing density? We'll have a 20 minute talk, uh, five minutes for Q&A, and then five minutes for the room switch, which I guess we're going into lunch, so that'll be a, quite a big break there. Great, Solomon? Thank you, Bill. Uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, the project that I'm going to present, I'm going to talk to you about right now, was a collaborative work between the University of Pretoria and Council of Scientific Research and Scientific and Industrial Research of South Africa when I was doing my PhD. Uh, so the research was uh, addressing challenges uh, of crop and pasture production generally in South Africa because of the limited arable land not exceeding 15 percent and that is deteriorating and limited water uh, rainfall, erratic rainfall uh, and then production technologies such as irrigation and fertilizer was also limited and then this research was mainly focused on this grassland area of South Africa and it was under intense microgravity uh, under intense pressure because the communities around that site depended uh, their on livestock, but they couldn't afford to have their own pasture, so they would take them to the natural lands, and they were under uh, intense pressure. So what was required was a, a production system suitable for marginal land, and that's resource efficient, and, probably, and hopefully also rehabilitate the land using species that are again resource efficient and that, uh, that can survive marginal lands. So the possible solution definitely agroforestry and uh, intro intercropping system is also very widely used in subtropical enterprises as well. But despite all these uh, problems, the, the problems I, I mentioned in the potential of agroforestry, its adoption in South Africa was limited mainly because three because of three reasons. First one is farmers' uh, misconception about tree that farmers have because they are strict pastoral or crop growers, they would think trees are a waste of their life. And then, if anybody is open minded about that, they wouldn't know about the tree crop combination that works. And that's also a challenge. But in terms of policy, then, agriculture and forestry work on a different uh, Government department, the Department of Agriculture, Ministry of Agriculture, and then the Department of Water Affairs and Forestry. So there was no room for conciliated policy. But recognizing that Water Research Commission, that's a bigger funder of uh, water related research, uh, funded the project as the title of the system for improved productivity to increase the user for to undertake knowledge interest experiments, modeling on selected and applicable systems around here. So the potential systems that were recognized and were used include other cropping for the vats and silver pasture, using a number of crops that are familiar to the site, and trees that may be uh, familiar to the site, or some of these trees, fast growing trees, that might have potential may not be known to the farmers, so some of them were new. So what I'm going to talk about will be Civil pastoral system is in the queer in general. And that was the biggest component of the project. So what's Kukui? Kukui is a creeping uh, summer uh, grass, I mean it's a perennial grass that we come to life in the summer. And it's very good uh, in terms of supporting livestock, dry land and irrigated conditions. And uh, it can tolerate basic marginal conditions and it's widely <coughs> used in the air. And then you have the trophy. It's a uh, small, fast growing tree. I'm going to show you some pictures right now. Uh, drought resistant, can grow well in a low productivity and low fertility conditions. It's a good, but it has been used for a number of environmental services like erosion control or life fences, but its biggest potential, at least recognized for this project, was due to the biodiesel that it contains in its nuts. Are expected to uh, use, use or expected like our high prices because of uh, some uh, results that 
existed before. There wasn't extensive research. So it can bear you as early as one year, provided that the rainfall is good, but uh, it peaks around for five years from now. And that's two to three. I want you to remember that number. Two to three is an year, and on five months per hectare high rainfall. So this is what it looks like very young. It's the city street, so the root is loose is too tough. And then this is all the cumulative green. And this is the, the productive aspect to it, so it comes from a bunch of clouds, a river and plant, that turn into this nuts and little occurring. So the objective of this component of the project was to understand the directions and productivity of a growing intercropping system in the Jutlapa and Kukuyu by conducting minimum to the water, solar radiation, tree productivity, tree growth, and uh, Kukuyu productivity. So there were five hypotheses, but I just want to focus on this front. Uh, when we do our group first, we uh, the wood component, the density that you need might be part of your objective. You need to add this what if you don't want to change that density? But you try to manipulate the space and you achieve a better product, like tree productivity or crop productivity. Can you minimize? Can you have a way around the competition? You are an using the spacing and the right changing density. That would be our hypothesis. So site, you bring a site representative of the area. Uh, it's a warm site, but it was it's classified as warm temperature with annual rainfall because 25% or a quarter of the rain comes in winter. And that will be the area. Uh, five treatments and three boats and three boats. You have a tree only treatment with no plants underneath, three by three planting. The standard spacing again. This one, same spacing, but you have trees growing under as under story crops, single row, you have the hedge row, there's two meter in parallel spacing, but uh, five meter alley where the uh, grass was growing on the pasture. Double row, then you have, can you just see this one? A set of two rows on either side of the intercropping system that is six meter wide. And the triple row again is a set of three rows on either side. That's seven uh, meter wide uh, intercropping zone. The soil wall loomed to clay loom, but the clay content increased with depth, but it was shallow depth clay, about 65 centimeters, very shallow. So early side prep. Uh, that was installed in five as when it was planted. And uh, we control, make sure that no grass grows next to the tree, 50 meters clearance and all aspects. But if you, in the double row and triple row, nothing will grow under the trees in the middle of the tree. And just to show you what the competition is like. This was about two weeks after the first rain incident, that's like the middle of the spring. In spring in South Africa is like September. So this is early November. But this is a single row. So it has a little clear plant point that's not where grass are not allowed to grow. So you can see the leaving. And then there is no grass here, so the leaving obviously is much higher. And this goes outside because the, there is no leaving that the trees can extend their roots to. They will support and and these three pictures were taken on the same way. Just another picture to show you what the double row looks like. This is what looks like on the intercropping zone. This is what looks like if you don't You're not supposed to see this. So what measurements were taken? Uh, radiation measurement using two solar meters at different distance across the hedge. So from the middle of the intercropping zone from the hedge to the other one. And that's for all the treatment like that. So for the tree only single row gap row. And same distance for soil water as well. But also the depth was considered. Plant parameters included basal diameter every month, tree height every month, and uh, pasture across this distance the same as the radiation. So this is some of the things for measurement just on top of the 
of the results. The bars will show rainfall, it's monthly, but uh, what this shows us is this one is the treatment with no competition that it had around 20% bigger diameter in just about two months. In just about two years, and all of them were planted with a diameter of 10 millimeters in 2005. So by 2005, 20% bigger. But the rest of them didn't have that much difference. In terms of the uh, relative growth rate, where there was enough sufficient rainfall at this time, the relative growth rate didn't change, didn't vary among treatments, including the normal competition treatment. But when the rainfall was a little lower, like this one, then you can see uh, no competition had a better productive. And then early, talent, uh, early spring 2007, all the trees were cut to a height of one meter to encourage lateral growth and lateral branching. The long one down the line showed incredible number of branches, but it didn't translate into increased productivity. But the whole point of that was to accumulate more room for growth. Uh, but we monitored a monthly growth of height after that one meter, even all these community competition treatments, and you can tell again whether there was competition or was no competition had uh, an advantage, but some of them now they start to show different. Whether it was high rainfall condition or low rainfall condition, there was some difference because of the uh, spacing, three spacing of rainforest. This is the uh, low rate uh, aspect. Okay, so this is the productivity, but first picture will show you the poetry productivity of each treatment. And obviously, there was no competition to have that new, not new. But the others were not significantly. But they were significantly lower, but not significantly different from one another. And that continued for two years. After the, about the third year, you can see some distinction. If you divide the not new by the total balance, again, and there was no significant difference from the spacing treatment, which means this one was not just producing small, the trees were generally small, the ratio remained the same. But that's a kilogram per hectare. So that's what I ask you to remember. This is about four years when it's about approaching the yield. <coughs> semi arid the estimated was two to three pounds. At best, we're going to get four to four. Okay, radiation distribution, this is the drop only. And uh, this purple line shows right beneath the tree. And this is uh, 75 centimeter, and this one meter. And on the south and west, this is a cross, and that replicate and the north is going far. So this is a transmission. You can see it's not symmetrical distribution because on the one side you have more radiation regions, so it's up as compared to the other. This is water content. Uh, I need to explain this one. Uh, don't look at it, just uh, a layer of water sitting on top of the soil. Just look at this one as, a, uh, as an axis showing 99. That will be profile water content during your typical uh, extended period of time. Or right out of the rising, you get 99 at that 1.5 meter away from the tree. But when it, uh, after it rains, so the thickness of this blue zone will actually show you how much change will happen over a period, how much water will be used up from that section. So this is not no grass zone, which means combination of inky and uh, roots of the tree here are using more water from here than that one. This is that row, uh, single row, where you see this is a grass productivity. And this is the amount of radiation intercepted by that at different distance during the same time. And you can tell that there is no significant difference between this distance and the other one. But there is more dramatic increase on the one side, and it's not supported by radiation. But the uh, water quantum change will show that it's supported. 
but it was more than it was just a two year road. This is the double road again. You have two roads, nothing wrong to learn them. And then the grass again increased this distance. Same here, but it's more grassy on the other side, but well, it's southwestern in this case. And uh, look at the radiation distribution. They are almost the same, but yet you see the distribution. Uh, this would be the water content. Uh, the top row again. That is a uh, And then there is the evapotranspiration. This is total monthly evapotranspiration from the sites. And you can tell that the highest would be from zero. It's because uh, some of the loss comes right underneath the tree. The canopy on the single was so small, I think it felt the competition in the past. And it didn't get that now. And uh, <coughs> so try and put uh, everything together for comparison. So this is the radiation infrastructure that you drop on it. So incident radiation comes, some of it will be intercepted by the tree and the rest will make it past the tree, in this case, to the soil something. But in the single row and dark row, it will be intercepted by the crop construction. Some of it will obviously will be the soil something. But the highest proportion was uh, captured by trees was in the drop only for obvious reasons because the nuclear index was uh, not much in the other And uh, the two of the single row and dark row but the double row I have to make an average of the two nuclear index, but it was similar to this, the single row and I mean, the intersection percentage was not that much different either. Uh, radiation use efficiency, that would be the ratio of the amount of radiation that was uh, intercepted at a spot and divided by the biomass from that spot during the same duration. And first of all, the, the average radiation units use efficiency of pasture in both treatments were about the same. But they both increase the work from the tree. And more on the northeast, on the single row, southeast on the double row, which duplicates the form of the water distribution. So this shows that maybe there was more water here. If there was more water here, we would have higher uh, radiation use efficiency. So radiation efficiency the lower closer to the tree because of the competition of water for water with the tree as well as because maybe uh, the radiation that comes and that intercepted by the tree canopy is poor or photosynthetically active radiation. It does that in the quality work and that's what the crops would be uh, This is the last one is uh, water use efficiency, system water use efficiency. Uh, it's difficult to compare because some of the grass some of the will not. In terms of nut variety, obviously, uh, no competition has the highest nut variety, the highest above ground biomass trees, uh, but uh, not going to use this one. But the two competitions that involve everything, the grass and the spacing, the world might be different because this wasn't significantly different. The, uh, the grass, the single row has significant significantly higher, about 10 percent more, but at what cost? Its ET was its ET was uh, much higher. So in terms of water efficiency, that would go was was better. But in terms of water production, it's even more. Before I explain this conclusion, so it looked like it was a perfect match for silver pastor using the tropa and to create it and now the growth so the life that we use the grass, but they don't take it in a general factor. It develops uh, secondary metabolites. Even later on, uh, hydrogen cyanide, so they don't have to get some diarrhea, vomiting. So it's a good thing because they don't compromise the tree uh, for those injuries. Just in the aircraft, we need to But in terms of productivity, it was a letdown, so it wasn't going to be a promised uh, source unless they put a lot of uh, mining to irrigation and fertilizer. Okay, so coming back to conclusion, the interactions were competitive. As a result, there were uh, reductions in the uh, top growth and tree yield. 
when Hitler was not military again, Bernard was more more uh, determinant of the reductions. So the most important point on transmit the effects of the normal interaction of composition on the field productivity couldn't be modified, couldn't be reduced by spacing, but radiation watering and uh, pasture flows could be uh, optimized if we just think if we know how to do that. Uh, the continuation of that I had a modeling work to do so that to identify what spacing and root orientations to do, uh, because it will be difficult to establish all possible uh, uh, scenarios of width of, or orientation of the house. I would like to thank the Motor Research Commission for fully funding the project. It was a five year project, and the National Research, uh, Research Foundation of South Africa for additional uh, funding. Thank you very much. Got about two minutes for questions, and Solomon, if you don't mind repeating the questions for the recording, that'd be great. We noticed that on, on your hypotropa, uh, essentially water is your limiting factor. No matter what, you can have some change in density, but water is the limiting factor. Were you irrigating, or was it no, not irrigating? No irrigation. Okay, what, what was your average uh, rainfall per year? Six, seven hundred, six hundred, eighty, seven hundred. Oh, that's quite a bit. But, uh... Well, you get 250 to 500 to your half. I'm not growing corn. Uh, so you, you'd be, you would consider that, what, semi-arid? Yes. Okay. Does, does that come just dominantly in one season? Or is it spread throughout the year? Sorry? The precipitation, does that happen mostly in one season or is it spread throughout the year? The question was if the, if the precipitation was seasonal or throughout the year. 25%, quarter of that comes in winter. So it's a plus that's annual rainfall zone. So if you were to do this again, would you look for a grass that maybe isn't so competitive? Or, or do you have plans in the future to look at a, a different type of grass um, to work into the system that may make it work a little better? So you don't have to blow down competition? Uh, okay, the question was if I would consider other grass to minimize competition. I would, but uh, they are much more used to the grass. So in terms of application, the community, they'll be much more open-minded about the grass they know around the area. But you're right, because the grass was, in terms of uh, overall, the grass was high, it had higher evapotranspiration than the tree itself. The tree was very close about the working group. Got time for one more quick one. I'm curious why you chose a biofuel tree as opposed to, say, something that would produce fruit or uh, something that could be used more locally? Oh, well, it was uh, uh, for cash purposes because farmers cannot afford anything, so it was chosen as high value crop. It just happened to be. But there is no physiological back into that. So the question was, uh, what is it? Oh, hey, no. The question was, why was about the uh, biofuel uh, tree crop here? So like the other first other fruit crops. I think some of the reason was because of the dark potential that it had to grow for marginal lands and low water content, low fertility conditions. It can grow all in low elevation. It's suitable for low yeah. elevation growth, and that area is supposed to play. What other secondary products do you have about come out of it? You get a you get a seed meal, high protein seed meal out of what's left of the, the seed? They, they would use them for fertilizers, and you see a number of small applications. Some people have used it for soft making and for many, many small filter. When you try to take it to the community, it might work. Uh, it's not a big income angle, but it might work. But it's, it's not even high energy wood, if you 
They said me you cannot use it because there is a high concentration of toxin which is coursing. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason that you would have to extract can you denaturize it? Well, you know, I think it, uh, it's more work and more energy to do that. That is already disposed. Yeah. High concentration of what? Coursing. Okay. The toxin that is in present in the uh, on the purpose. All right. Let's thank Solomon again.